Hello and welcome. My name is Shelly. I'm a writer, an astrologer, and a card reader, and I'd like to welcome you to my channel. Uh, happy Tuesday. It is How to Tarot Tuesday. And what that is, is uh, every week I post a, a video that pertains to one of the 78 card tarot. Um, in that video, the first half of it, we talk about one, one of the cards in question, and we go through the symbols of the card. Um, after we discuss the symbols in the card, uh, the second part of the video is where you, uh, the viewer, choose from one of three tarot decks. Um, the three tarot decks are chosen based on the symbolism of the card. And we'll go ahead and do a quick reading to see how that card manifests in your life. Uh, today we are doing uh, the last card of the Pentacle suit. We're doing the King of Pentacles. Uh, the first deck is always the Rider Waite Smith. And then the other two decks, again, I, I choose based on the imagery. Um, if you ever want to skip straight to your reading, the timestamps are listed in the description box below, as are the names and authors of the decks that I use. So before we begin, I, um, I do clarify the read using oracle cards. Uh, today we are clarifying using kind of a special deck. Um, this is actually a little bit of a rare deck. Um, there is an author named uh, Doreen Virtue. Um, who uh, primarily did a lot of, um, she produced and created a lot of Oracle decks um, early in her career. Um, quite a few of them are, um, are like the angel decks that you see me use. Um, she also has, she has like several, um, including the Romance Angels. And, um, and she also uh, collaborated on this deck, which is the Past Life Oracle deck. Um, this is really a beautiful deck. It was um, co-produced with um, with another PhD, I believe. The, the name and the author is in the description box. And the images just really speak to me. Um, I don't really use the deck so much to, um, to you know, uh, to see about past lives, but um, the symbols really do speak to me. And... Um, and I feel like um, I, th I thought that I was just kind of drawn to use that for the King of Pentacles as it is kind of a real world deck. Now, um, if you, um, this, this Oracle deck is out of print. If you go to find it online, you probably can find um, a, like a recent deck of it. Um, the, the problem with some of the decks is because um, in recent years, um, Doreen Virtue has moved away from doing Oracle decks. So any of the decks that are out there are the final prints of, of those you know, publications, so she's not creating any more. Um, so sometimes if you go to look for that deck online, you might see it at like some kind of overinflated price because they're no longer being produced. Um, I lucked out and I got I got my deck for well well under you know I got it for about sixty dollars which is pretty inflated but sometimes you'll see like this deck in um, or the Romance Angel deck for like over a hundred dollars it's really ridiculous um, some of the decks that you see online aren't aren't even in English they might be in another language and they're selling you know again because of the rarity of it but um, I just wanted to disclose that to you in case you were interested in the cards that I used um, on top of it um, on top of the Oracle deck I am using a piece of amber so if you've ever seen uh, you know the Jurassic Park movies it's like the amber that had the mosquito in it it's a beautiful stone and I thought that it you know being of the earth and being of um, tradition I thought it really played well into the cards so, uh, that being said, let me go ahead and jump right in. Um, today we are talking about, I, I can't believe it, we're already at the, um, the end of the Pentacles suit, and we are talking about the king. So, when you, when you see the, the traditional Rider Waite Smith, King of Pentacles, um, you see a very noble man. He has a strong jaw, and he's sitting on a throne that has uh, what looks like two bulls, two, two bulls on either side. He has a crown and that is golden and a, a scepter. Um, in his hand, he's holding a, a, a pentacle that he is looking down at, similar to the queen. Um, on his robe, you see embroidery that has um, the, the images of grapes. And then um, you see at his feet, there's um, he wears armor, but at his feet, he has a lot of greenery. He has real grapes and then he has foliage that grows all around him. 
and in the distance um, you see the, the edge of a castle, right? And he does, he looks like a very affluent king. So first and foremost, the, the first thing that you think of, and especially um, the pentacle suit is things that you value. Um, so a lot of times the, the first thing that comes to mind is, um, is, is money. So uh, the king of pentacles usually means a, 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 a wealthy man, somebody who has affluence, somebody who, who is um, you know, very, very successful right, in a financial sense. Um, it usually means that um, uh, with the grapes on his uh, robe, um, and this, this deck was created at the turn of the 19th, uh, 20th century, sorry, 20th century, and um, it really does, uh, grapes then, you know, were a delicacy. It's like they were really, you know, not, not as commonplace. So the grapes are, um, you know, valuable. They were like a valuable fruit. Um, it's interesting, I was watching the history of pineapples, because you know how sometimes you see, um, you know, pineapples uh, as a symbol of, um, they were they were expensive, right? They weren't easy, they were not easy to get the way that they are today. So, you know, and then of course, uh, grapes usually are made um, made into wine. So that's, that's also a sign of, of, of having, you know, being, having it all, right? Having a lot. Um, so the king is someone who attracts wealth. Um, he's naturally kind of an enterprising character, uh, similar to the queen. He just, he's very, um, you know, the king of pentacles is very practical. Um, with the, the, with the bulls on his, um, throne, a lot of times he does represent a earth sign, usually Taurus. Um, and, it, you know, but it can be Capricorn or Virgo. Um, I thought it was kind of neat. I'm actually filming this video with the, um, on a day that the sun is in Virgo and the moon is in Taurus. So I thought it was a very apt time to, to film. But, um, but yes, it's somebody who makes a lot of money. Um, the other thing is with the, um, with the, el the you know, the, the elaborate embroidery of his cloak, um, it is somebody who likes the fine things in life. Um, so, and with it being grapes, it can, a lot of times, uh, Taurus men um, definitely appreciate the quality of things, which is very much like the Queen of Pentacles as well. Um, they're the persons who will put more money into buying something that lasts versus, you know, just, you know, spending less money and then having it be cheap. Um, they're also somebody, um, King of Pentacles tends to be someone who enjoys uh, good food. Um, this would be the person who likes, you know, good dinners uh, and good wine. Um, you, they kind of like the best of everything, right? Um, in the background, in previous cards, we've seen that when you see the civilization, when you see kind of the, the uh, you know, the... Um, you can see that he he is of both the garden and of the civilized world, so that definitely does mean somebody who's um, an entrepreneur, somebody who is a business owner. Um, I was actually watching a really great um, video just the other day about um, someone who um, a, a, someone who was recycling steel. And um, I really thought of the King of Pentacles when I was watching it because um, the person um, was talking about how instead of extracting, you know, mining to get more steel from the ground, you could just recycle steel that's already, you know, that's, you know, salvaged. And, um, and he was, you know, he, the man was in his 60s and he had been... Um, recycling metal since he was 18 and he just had a passion for it and he you know it was um, so what what also kind of struck me about that is and why it seemed like King of Pentacles to me is because he not only made money from it but he was about um, uh, he he understood um, the, the how it served the earth right um so just like the 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 queen you know the king cares about um this can be a man who makes money from you know it could be someone who has a winery or someone who recycles or someone who understands the nature of um giving back to the earth um or who makes their living you know in that capacity because he does he he sits in a garden but he does also s serve civilization there right 
Um, one thing I kind of think of, especially when you see um, the cloak and the, the affluence, is um, I definitely think of somebody, um, the King of Pentacles is that real reliable man. Like, he's he's very practical, right? He's, he's the good businessman. So a lot of times it can be a stockbroker. Um, it can be a banker. Um, I also kind of see this again, you know, this being, you know, him being able to be any type of businessman there is. I've always seen the King of Pentacles, um, and especially with the Taurus and the Earth signs in it, they're always very, very patient. And I kind of think of it as those real level-headed businessmen. Um, in my daily life, in my working life, I, I talk to business uh, owners a lot. And what I love about the King of Pentacles is that they're always the person that when you call, you could have like something really, you know, you could have a really messy situation and you could be panicking and freaking out. But the moment you get a King of Pentacles on the, on the phone, he's like cool, calm, collected, you know, d doesn't let anything ruffle him. Um, and he, he knows he knows he's going to take care of the situation, right? You, you know things are going to get taken care of. Um, I also see this person as the guy who, um, who's, you, you've heard the phrase of, you know, all talk and no walk. I always think the king of pentacles upright is all walk and no talk. You know, like he does, he does what he sets out to do. And, um, and again, being the mature, you know, the mature masculine, he's the last of the suit. He's, he's experienced the, you know, he's beyond the 10, right? A lot of times the king is the person that's in the 10 of pentacles, right? He's, he's the mature masculine. Um, he's also very skillful. Um, a lot of times you see this as someone who is um, skillful with their hands. Like this could be someone who likes to build things. Um, actually the table that I work on, you know, um, you're going to see this actually in a few weeks. You're going to see more videos talking about my table. It was actually built by my, uh, created by my great grandfather in his wood, wood shop. And so a lot of times this can be like a real father type person who, who likes to create. And, um, you know, it could be someone who, who creates furniture, it can be someone who works with their hands. Um, it could be woodwork. Um, I also see this, and it's interesting, you know, um, a lot of times when you think of clay or, um, uh, you know, uh, a lot of times you think of pottery and, you know, that might be more of a more feminine kind of activity, but, you know, um, I, I care a lot about environmental causes and I was watching a great video about how to make um, corn cob houses. And what that is, is that's actually an, a, a clay adobe structure that you can actually make with your hands. It's all clay and water. And then once it's dried, you can actually, it's like drywall. You can actually build houses with this. And that's what I kind of think of when I think of the King of Pentacles. He is, he's earth. He likes to build from the earth, right? Um, and, and in that sense, you know, this could be somebody who does like to farm. It can be a farmer. Um, but definitely someone who understands the earth and how things go into the earth and come out of the earth. Um, the other thing is that, um, just real quick before we continue on to the other cards, um, I think of this as j in the same vein as the real cool, calm, collected person. I do think of it somebody, again, also with the quality, the way that he, he cares about the quality of things. Um, I do think that this is a well-dressed man, uh, just like the Queen of Pentacles. I, I immediately think, okay, G, G, GQ, right? I think of, um, you know, like a Chris Hemsworth or a, a Denzel Washington. Like, the man that anytime you see him, he's always impeccably dressed. Um, but aside from that, um, it's, it's one of those things where it's not just skin deep where he wears nice clothes. He makes the clothes look good because of his demeanor and, you know, the way that he handles things. Um, the King of Pentacles is the, the impeccably reliable person, right? You, you lean on this person, right? He's, he's always there. And in that same vein, I, I went ahead and for the second deck, I went with the Zillic Tarot. And um, you're going to see that it says Knight of Discs, but what it is is that in, in this deck, um, the Knights are the Kings. Um, and then, you know, where, where it would normally say Knight is um, they have a Princess, which is a Page, a Prince, which is the Knight, a Queen, which is the Queen, and then in this deck, the Knights are the Kings. 
So this is the King of Pentacles. But um, he is a knight. He's on a horse. But what I love is that you see kind of, um, you see wheat and harvest. In the background, you see what looks like a, a rising or setting sun. And you see him holding an orb, which is the, the disc or the, uh, or the pentacle. And what, what I really love about this that carries over is that, um, the, you know, the King of Pentacles, um, you know, in, in the traditional tarot, um, the sun usually represents, um, can represent mean, being a father, right? Because um, you see a child, you know, like a baby on horseback, right? In the, in the traditional um, sun card. And um, what it is, is that he holds the what looks like a sun. He has a sun behind him and then his disc looks like a sun. And you see him holding it, right? He's, he's guarding it. And you see his horse is, is very, you know, um, similar to, you know, the knight. The horse is, you know, got all four feet on the ground. But um, when you see the harvest, again, it plays into that him being good and of the earth. But um, the thing that I think of, especially with a father, is that this is the reliable father. Just like the queen is you know, gives to her children. This is the father who provides. He's the one who works really hard um, to bring home money for his family. Um, it could be um, a father who is blue collar, who makes money. You know, he can be a plumber. He can be, um, a, you know, he can work on pools. He can, you know, he can be any anything, any natural physical element, um, more, more likely earth right? You know, could be a carpenter or an electrician. But what it is, is that he takes care of his family. He makes sure that he has, he's the one who puts the roof over the head of his, of his, of his family. And what, what I think of is that, you know, especially with him on the, on the horseback, um, you know, knights, you know, he's a king in this deck, but being on horseback, you know, and not just sitting on a throne, it tells me that he he goes he goes and does what he needs to do, right? He makes sure everything's done. And with him being a king, what it is is that I think he's the reliable father where you know that if you have a problem, like um, I was watching a there was a great streaming show on um, uh, that was about cooking and um, and the the person in the 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 main um, the the lead of the show couldn't get her oven to turn on and you know and, and that's a scary thing right you know you're lighting you're lighting a match and the pilot went out and um, she called her grandfather and her grandfather immediately came in and within like five minutes got the oven work. Um, working, you know, and that's what you think of when you think of the King of Pentacles, right? You think of somebody, i um, sorry, there was something flying there. Um, but you think of somebody who, who takes care of you in that way. Um, if you had a, a plumbing problem that you couldn't figure out, if your car broke down on the side of the road and you needed to call your dad, you know, he's the one who comes in and takes care of you. Um, he's also the quintessential father figure. Um, you know, he's the practical one where, you know, you know, if you have kind of emotional needs, you go to mom, but if you have, um, you know, he's that, he's that, that, that cornerstone of practicality where if, if you, you needed to turn or lean on someone, he would be the shoulder, right? He's the shoulder. Um, I actually think of this when I, I was growing up, um, for, I spent three years overseas. I lived in Japan from the time I was three to the time I was about five or six. And it was, um, and we, we lived, um, we were in the military and we lived off base. We didn't live on base and we became very close to our neighbors. Like, and, um, my, my Japanese father, because we, we became so close to our neighbors. Um, I, I considered, um, um, our neighbors had three daughters and my dad, and then it was my sister and me. So there were five girls, right? And we were so close. We were like sisters. And um, my Japanese father really treated us like we were a part of his family. And what we would do is we lived in an apartment building. And in the bottom of the apartment building, there was a candy. There was a convenience store right on the corner. And what he would do is um, he would be so generous. He always give us money. He was always giving us money to run down to the candy uh, the, to the store to get candy, and what was beautiful is that um, you know my mom could always watch us from the window, like she could see us going down the street, 
Um, so she always had an eye on us and, and, you know, and my Japanese father was always giving us money to go and, and, you know, it was, it was like freedom. It was great. And then the store owner knew us as well. Cause it was kind of like, it, it really was neat. It, you know how they say it takes a village to raise the child. And it was really like that. We all looked out for each other. And, but, um, it was that kind of generosity. Like he didn't, he never thought twice about it and you and you never gave the money back he wouldn't he wasn't having that right he was like no go you know go get go get gum go get gum you know he was always um letting us go and and letting us be um so it, it really is kind of like that it's the father who doesn't want you to want for anything he doesn't want you to worry about anything that's that's his job right it's his job to worry about that kind of stuff but um um, there's also another great streaming movie. It's kind of a sci-fi show that's coming out on HBO Max, and um, it's really neat. There's a character in that sci-fi show called it's 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 an android. It's very sci-fi, but there's a mo an android mother and there's an android father, and the father really struck me as like a King of Pentacles type as well. And again, it's it's like. He he had that he has the right amount of backbone. Like he's just he's he's so um it's not really stern, you know, because he'll stand when he needs to. He doesn't let the children walk all over him, but he does also, you know, yield to them. Like their their welfare comes first. And that's definitely what you see in kind of a physical and financial way, um, with a King of Pentacles father. Now, the last, um, you know, he's just, he's, he's very willing to jump in and, and, you know, support. Now, one other thing before we move to the third deck is that this is also a very uh, philip, philanthropic, eh, I never say that word right, just like the Queen of Pentacles, this is someone who cares, um, again, also with, um, with, with him knowing a lot about the finer things um, this could be someone who's a very good cook, and um, it can be someone who's a chef. Um, but we'll we'll get into that in a minute. What it is is um, being a practical person and someone who understands the nature, you know, of nature. Um, it's also someone who's very regimed. So it's somebody who can be good at um, knowing ingre ingredients, right, and having everything in place to 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 cook the way you need to cook. Um, but the other thing that I kind of think about that is that um, he he's he's very skilled in, in what he knows how to do. He knows how to do very, very well. So it's one of those things where, you know, um, he can also give his money to causes that he cares about. Um, and this usually is a man who has like it might be someone who's very experienced in art because Taurus, again, Taurus are very, um, they, they have, um, they're very good at culture, right? They, you know, like, for instance, if they, um, if they like silk clothing, they might learn everything about how silk is made, or if they, you know, make furniture, they, they care about the quality of furniture. Um, and, and you do see them also being those, um, kind of CEOs who de um, dedicate or contribute money to, you know, maybe PBS for learning or, you know, or art museums or something like that. They just, they have a stake, um, that's both financial and supporting in a lot of culture. Um, now the other thing that I kind of think of is that this could very well be um, just, you know, outside of the business realm, it can be someone who is a, um, who deals in um, real estate. Um, because again, it's physical and it's housing, right? But one thing that I kind of notice that I think of when I see a King of Pentacles type is that I really think of people who, um, who are, um, who are, not just own real estate, but it could, you know, which could be, it could be a landlord for sure. Um, but I also think of it as people who deal in mortgage, like a mortgage, um, like a, a real estate person who shows houses. And the reason I think that is because I've definitely talked to you. Have you ever met like a good real estate broker when, um, when they go to show you a house they know that it's almost like they have such a big heart, like they're generous in the fact that if they're they're looking out to to give you the best home for what you're looking for. 
and I've definitely had it a few times where I was, you know, I might look at a place and the person goes, well, you know, the foundation of this house is not solid and I would not want you to go for something that's not safe. And for someone to say that, you know, for someone to say, okay, I could easily just, you know, scam you and, you know, get, you know, um, get you to buy this house and get a commission from it. But I know that's not what you need. And um, I've just, I, I know several, I, I, I have two people that I know that um, are, you know, deal in real estate. They, they show houses and they, they they just have a heart like that like right like they they look after people in that financial way um and you know when it comes to property um they're gonna you know find show you the house that is quality they're gonna show you the house that has the features you're looking for so i do think of people you know um men in particular pr particularly who um show houses or deal in mortgage right um and and also when you think about that you know the 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 satisfaction i mean what a wonderful job that is when you when you know that you know you make a living off of it but you you give people their home right you you sold you you're the reason that somebody has a roof over their head right again you know now the last card that we have here is that um we went with the um the star seeker tarot by the fan mystic and i did when i did the flip through for this uh, deck i this was the actually the one deck i've done a flip through here on my channel um it's in my playlist if you ever want to watch it i was really drawn to this king and i thought he was so different because um the traditional king is always looking down at his pentacle right you know the and it, it, that's a that's a kind of a staple throughout most decks that i've seen um, but here he has the pentacle above his head, which I thought was so neat. And I love his throne because his throne looks like a, the trunk of a tree, right? And then I love the fact that he has a book under his hand. And I do. And he has, I think this is great. He has a vine climbing up his foot and around his throne. Um, so what I think of is that um, I love this deck because um, it, it really speaks to me of someone just like in the steadiness and the reliableness. Um, it's someone who works towards a goal with a very firm resolve but he's very mature so a lot of times I do I think of someone who has who's um, who's affluent because he works um, in a practical way so I do I think of engineers um, I think of builders, you know, so that again, in the real estate sense, it can be someone who's a contractor or someone who builds houses or has an empire of that. Um, I do also think of doctors or scientists, someone who's spent their life because, you know, learning and, and continue, they continue to learn even though they're doctorates. Um, I have a grandfather who had a lot of Capricorn in his chart, and he was a, he was a meteorologist, so he studied storms and you know calculations for weather. Um, I also just think with the tree, it's just you know again, it's so steady. It's it's when you see all the foliage growing around and the harvest, you know, it, it's just someone who maintains, um, who's always so stable. Again, you know, again, it's it's someone who does not get rocked easily. So a lot of times it's just, you know, it's steady, you know, in a situational sense, it can be someone who, who is very reliable, who's always there, who's someone who's always the shoulder to cry on, to lean on, um, the, someone, the person who doesn't lose their head in a, in a, um, in, you know, this person does not panic. They always are, are slow and steady. Uh, they're very reliable and competent. Um, they're mature and they're giving um and they're gentle that's the other thing too is a lot of times you see someone who's very gentle and um you know and kind it's definitely a man who works hard very industrious someone who who loves nature and who is very financially savvy um and it's, it could, you know, situationally, in a situational sense, it could be um, a situation that involves land. It can be the building of a home or someone who's helping you buy a home. Um, it could be involvement in a business matter that, um, you know, in which you're dealing with someone who is very reliable. It can also mean a, a business venture that will turn you into the King of Pentacles. Um, it can also mean, you know, that property manager, um, that, you know, your property manager or the person you're dealing with, your landlord is going to take good care of you. 
Um, it definitely means that, you know, what, um, if it pertains to a situation, it means that you're going to approach it with a maturity and a patience, and you are, you're going to go far, you're going to achieve that king, king status, and you can be a woman in this energy as well. But um, it also means that you're very conscientious. So um, if this does, if you maybe you're building a greenhouse and it just means that things will get done right, it'll be stable and it'll be, um, you know, um, it'll be sustainable. There we go. That was the word I was looking for. But a lot of times it does mean for sure it means a patriarch. Um, it can mean a grandfather. It can mean a father. And um, but a lot of times it means someone who's a protector and a very, very loyal friend. Now, if we go ahead and look at the king in reverse, oh my goodness. Now, first off, I want to just note that, you know, the, the king in, you know, the king in the upright or the reverse can be any earth sign, and it doesn't necessarily have to be someone with a, um, you know, it doesn't have to be somebody who has a sun sign and an earth, an earth element, but it could be someone who's behaving in that element, right? And the first thing I want to point out is that the Taurus, the sign of the bull, they are very steady and they are very uh they're, they're very plotting but if you've ever seen a taurus man woman child um get angry <laughs> um that's the first thing i kind of think of when you see the king of pentacles in reverse um you've heard of a bull in a china shop right so we'll we'll get to that in a minute but first i think of is um when um taurus people are very slow and steady but if you anger them, if you tick off an earth person, especially a Taurus one or one who's in, you know, acting like a Taurus, right? Um, the first thing that you've heard of a bull seeing red, right? You know, mess with the bull, get with the horns. That's the first thing that I think of with the King of Pentacles in reverse. Um, I think of somebody who is slow to anger, but the moment you piss them off, you better start running <laughs> because the running, you've seen the running of the bulls. Uh, you know, um, a king of pentacles can, you know, the anger of a king of pentacles can be very, um, just like they are in, you know, they're steady and getting what they want. They're steady in, in, in defending themselves and fighting back as well. And the, the, just like they're slow to anger, they're slow to calm down as well. So a lot of times I do kind of think of somebody who is, you know, you know, first off, you know, kind of a, um, someone that you've got to a boiling point and you're about to get the horns, <laughs> right? Um, it can mean that, um, just like bull in a china shop, it can be someone who's a little fumbling, um, meaning that they're, they're, um, again, kind of, um, they're being heavy footed about something, um, and it might be kind of, you know, rocking the boat. Um, it can be somebody who has a financial stake in something that is um, by them, you know, kind of throwing their weight around. It's it's causing damage. Um, this can be an investor who wants something their way and it's kind of, you know, throwing off the whole show. Um, it can be someone who is a little bit who lacks sense. Um, somebody who really, you know, kind of, um, you know, wants to wants to be the GQ, GQ man but is not quite coming across that way. Um, one thing I do kind of think of with the pentacles in reverse is that um, you know how sometimes just like the pentacles in upright um, it's someone who understands the art the arts very well or the quality of something very well or how to recycle the pentacles in reverse king in, in reverse might be someone who wants to to look like they know it well like someone who who wants to look like they know everything about something kind of like the queen in reverse you know wants to you know seem like they're you know all um kind of kind of a dilettante you know um but then they come across as a little bit of a bigot because they're trying to appear like they know what they're doing and they really don't um either that you know you kind of see this as somebody who um you know says uh, kind of uh, i guess you would kind of think of it as somebody who's not passionate about um a, an investment but they 
they invest in it anyway. It would be the person who buys up a company even though they, they don't know anything about what the company does and then it you know it causes the company to fail because they're not passionate about it they don't know what it is they just you know they just bought it right you know what it kind of makes me think of is that scene in Pretty Woman with Richard Gere when he talks about how he buys up companies and then he breaks them apart and um, Julie Roberts says well do you like doing that and he's like I don't know that's what I do and you know when you think about that that's someone who really doesn't have a stake in it and and you kind of see it too um, you you see the pushback when he goes to buy this company and the the, the owner of the company doesn't want to sell um, they they need the money but you know the owner of the company cared about his business Richard Gere didn't care about his business he just you know you know invested in it for what it was worth and that's kind of what I think of when I that's really kind of that good analogy for the king in reverse um, in that same sense it can be someone who wants to appear as if they have a lot of money but don't you know I kind of see it as those uh, you know those that it could be those kind of uh, nouveau rich kind of guys, um, the guys who want to be on the cover of GQ, but they don't really have the, they have the nice suits and they have the, the flash, but they don't really have the substance behind it. Um, a lot of times, um, again, a lot of times the men that you see um, on those kind of covers, um, the other thing that uh, we didn't touch on in the upright. I'm sorry, I don't, I don't mean to jump around so much, but uh, the other thing in the upright is loyalty. Um, so a lot of times the king in the upright is probably one of the most loyal husbands that you'd ever see. And um, so the king in reverse is usually more of a lecherous kind of guy. Um, he might be, you know, um, again, about kind of like the money. Um, he would be the type of person who has a wife who is beautiful, but he's not faithful to and you know He he can afford to have mistresses is kind of the thing um, And again that kind of plays into having the best of everything, but in a, in a negative sense um, The other thing is that it can be you know superficiality in that sense um, again also being a bigot in the sense that you know um, you know, kind of trying to pretend like you're good at what you do. Um, the other thing that I kind of see is I definitely see this as, as the, the, the businessmen who just really think their poop doesn't stink. <laughs> and not in a bad way, but, you know, they come to the table and it's like, well, you know, I have this money, you're going to do it. And it's really, you know, when you think about it, the gears of industry are not always, you know, there, there are hostile takeovers in business. But when when you're when the king's in the upright he is that that really kind business owner um i i've talked you know the king in the upright is that person who is endlessly patient even when times get frustrating he he just he gets it done and they're they're just they really are a gem they're really a gem um, and then the the king in the reverse is just i always kind of think of it as um any pentacle card uh, in the court, uh, upside down reversal is kind of like. I always um, I have the saying um, when you're you're being part of the problem and not the solution. Um, that's usually kind of a king in, in reverse. It's someone who um, who really you know uh, because they have money uh, insists on things being done their way. So a lot of times they're just really stubborn. They're arrogant. Um, they think because they have money that they just, you know, can behave in any way that they want. And it, they really do. They come across as, you know, being kind of an ass, you know, just a jackass, right? But um, a, again, you know, a lot of times it's, you know, it's stemming from, you know, sometimes it can be new money. Sometimes it can be old money that just, you know, um, you know, just really they 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 snap their fingers and they expect it to be done even though um, their behavior is really obnoxious um, a lot of times it can be it can be greed um, the definitely with that pentacle with him looking down at the pentacle you know it's like um, it can it can be that I always think of it as the Scrooge McDuck card um, it's it's money is the most important thing right it, and and a lot of times you'll see that when it's money is more important than family or money is more important than anything uh, you do see this with a lot of workaholics you know the almighty do dollar you know it really is the Ebenezer Scrooge kind of card in an extreme 
um, if you see the pet king in, um, in the reversal next to the four of pentacles, oh my gosh, that would be a real miserly person. Um, also with the bull, and again, it can be any earth sign or any um, manifestation of the, the earth element. It's someone who's endlessly stubborn. Um, that's the other thing. It's, you know, um, it's somebody who's very set in their ways. Um, it's, it, it would be the person that if you tried to introduce them to something new, if they, if they dig in, there's no, there's no talking to them, and especially if it comes to managing their money. Um, sometimes it can be the sign if, if you see this, uh, in reverse next to the seven of swords, it can be fraud, uh, can be, um, a really shady businessman or somebody who is um is you know kind of uh you know, greasing the books so to speak um it can be someone who's hiding their finances or you know you know trying to make them their you know make them appear as if they have more money than they do um it can be flat out theft um it can be maybe a stockbroker who's embezzling funds um, it can also be heavy handedness, you know, just somebody who's real stingy with money who doesn't. Um, I also noticed this, that it can be that person who wants to cut corners a lot. Like um, if you're building a house, it's somebody who doesn't instead of uh, again, instead of putting the, the money in it to do it right the first time, they'll cut corners and then it usually costs three times as much to fix it. Um, it can be poor property management or just, you know, poor management in general. Um, it can be that you really, you know, that person who doesn't know how to do their job really well, but, you know, who doesn't want to be outed that they don't. Um, sometimes, you know, with, especially with this king in the reverse, it can be, um, it can be kind of the sign of a bad doctor or, um, you know, somebody who, you know, a bad lawyer, um, sometimes it can be somebody who really, again, you know, might, you know, doesn't really take up cases for the honesty of the person they're defending. They'd rather, you know, make the money, you know, um, you might see this if it's next to justice, next to that, that lawyer who's defending the, cr the criminal, but, you know, they're getting paid a lot of money to do it. Um, a lot of times it can be keeping up the Joneses, you know, again, you know, that, that persona of just being the best. So a lot of times it can be that man who, um, might be pretty insecure. Um, it might be the person who maybe doesn't have a whole lot of money, but he wants to, you know, he wants to keep up with the, the affluence. And that does kind of speak to me as superficiality. I, I kind of see this, the King of Pentacles in reverse as being almost like that, that really kind of slimy music, uh, not, well, it could be a music producer too, but it could be a Hollywood producer who has all these big houses and fast cars, but it's, it's all very shallow, you know, no, no substance, you know, no family or, you know, they, they care about their work and then they come home to a hollow house, you know, kind of like that. Um, it can also be disorganization, um, you know, just somebody whose finances are very scattered, um, it can be, you know, uh, it can also be someone who really thinks the mean, you know, the end justifies the means. Um, so it can be that really, and, and you see that sometimes with earth signs too, the persistence, um, the tenacity in its negative form of, you know, well, I'm just going to push through this and I don't care how bloody it gets. You know, if you see this next to like the nine of wands, um, that would be a real scary character. And, um, you know, the if it comes to situations it can be a man who who is really struggling to take care of their family it can be someone who maybe was laid off or um i do also think of it as a really good man who works um you know the king in reverse is somebody who works really hard possibly works you know three jobs um and is more of a you know works with their hands but um but his priority is his family but sometimes the money isn't forthcoming um, so again, that kind of forced workaholism. Um, a lot of times, you know, again, if this is a situation, it's just dealing with someone who might be kind of vulgar or crude. Um, it might be someone who's very dishonest, um, you know, that someone you wouldn't trust with your money. Um, it would be that, you know, real estate salesman who does want to, you know, sell you the money pit and as long as they get their commission. Um, 
it would also be, you know, um, in this sense, it can be of someone who's a bit of a bully um, or, or a dictator, uh, definitely, because a lot of times these are men in power. Um, it's, you know, someone who's very op opinionated. Um, again, with that kind of, you know, man with the affluence, um, I do think it's someone who's a little bit of chauvinist. Um, if you definitely see this in a in a crowd with possibly the king of wands in reverse, I would think of that as being um, really kind of narcissist behavior or um, quite honestly a real sexist or womanizing kind of man um, because it is it's it's uh, you know pentacles being something of value. It's treating as treating um, it's kind of a object ob objectification. Of, of everything around him and that doesn't necessarily have to just be women it could be but it, again it's basing everything about what what value you have is is very base and kind of um you know you you, you what what you are is not the contents of your soul it's what 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 value you have to me is what a value i assign to you and that could be very physical right so it could just be for sex um uh, also, one last meaning is that, you know, the king in reverse can be someone who's very indulgent. Again, someone who likes the wine or, or likes good food. Um, it can be somebody who has a little bit of a heart condition or someone who might indulge in their food too much. Um, it, you know, if you see this next to, um, in the reverse next to the five of pentacles, it could be someone who's making themselves sick from it. Um, and if you see it next to like the devil, it can be someone who um, is addicted to making money or um, somebody who is addicted to gambling um, or someone who's in debt. Um, it can also be someone who's addicted to drinking because again, you know, the if you see this maybe next to the nine of cups or the devil, um, you know, it would be somebody who they're... Um, and in that sense, it can also be someone who's addicted to the pleasures of the physical. So, um, but also, you know, it, most of the time, you know, in the reversal, it can be somebody who's who's very, very worried about financial matters and who is is kind of burning the midnight oil in order to um, to get back into the upright, you know, of of the you know king being on his throne but whether it's in the upright or the reverse the 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 king of pentacles is a really is i i think of someone who's very forthright i think of someone who's very reliable it's the you know it's the grounded father and the good provider and um you know the the patient and kind and giving you know man so now that we got through that, well, I, I, I'm trying every single video. I try to make it short, but I do. I get so much out of it because it is, it's a, it's a really, you know, especially with the court cards, you know, I don't want to shortchange you. But we'll go ahead and we'll get into the, uh, the reading part of the video. So we have three gorgeous decks here. The first one is the Rider Waite Smith um, with the Sunstone. The second is the Zillic Tarot with the beautiful uh, green fluorite. The last deck is the uh, Starseeker Tarot uh, with a beautiful amethyst. So, um, amethyst quartz, yeah. But um, please take a minute um, to choose from your intuition. If you like the artwork, if you like the stone, maybe you like the timestamp. Um, whatever card you're drawn to, um, go ahead. If you need more time, please pause the video. And I'll see you in a minute. Okay, we're back. Let me go ahead. We'll move up the other decks. So let's go ahead and see how does this gorgeous King of Pentacles manifest in your life. So deck number one, the Rider Waite Smith. He really is the. I honestly, you know, I always have a tough time sometimes with the court cards um, choosing a. Um, you know, there was a competition. I really liked the Morgan Greer for this guy too. But someday, this is one of the kings. You know, the King of Pentacles and the Rider Waite Smith is so classic. I just really, there's there's few decks that compete with him um, from the traditional. So, but let's go ahead and see. Uh, we have the star on the bottom. That's pretty awesome, guys. Um, let's see, how does the King of Pentacles manifest in your life? Whoa! 
these decks are thoroughly shuffled, may I just say. Okay, future. Wow, that's a really clear message, guys. All right. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and see. So I'm just kind of getting a beat on this. Um, I'm kind of getting a few things from this. Um, in the past, you got the King and the Queen of Wands. And can I just tell you, I've, I've, I've used this deck, I use this deck all the time, and these two cards were nowhere near each other, <laughs> and they came out together. So quite, it's quite clear that um, in the past, this could, um, this, I kind of read it one of two ways. Um, these could either be parents, um, where you're, you know, um, where you, in the past, you might have grown up with, with parents that were, um, you know, very fiery, very outgoing, um, almost kind of adventurous, right? And the wands, the wands is less about physical security, right? It isn't, it, the wands uh, suit does not stay in one place, right? They don't, they don't um, build houses and like to, they're not homebodies, right? So I, I kind of get the sense that um, it's possible that you're really growing into your own power, the way the King of Pentacles manifests for you is that, and you can be a man or a woman watching this reading and in the King's energy, is that I think in the past that maybe you kind of grew up um like in your adult life you're a lot more solid or you you like stability because your parents were more adventurers growing up so that's one way that i read it because you know how it is you get opposite you know maybe you travel the world just like me i, I lived in japan you know and that's very adventurous right you know that's that's you know um going out on adventures right but um and you know you might say okay well i i had enough adventure in my childhood i really i i want to um but i'm i want to be me and i want to be more of a you know a homebody and build my own you know and kind of stay in one place and not venture around um the other way that i kind of read that um you know because your present energy is the page of cups right so um you know it this could quite honestly be that um you know, again, you, you grew up, you could have grown up in a very kind of wandering or um, following, following your, your, where the wind blew um, growing up. And now you might have a child, you know, you might have a child now and your, your focus is, okay, um, and this is a, a, a page of water, right? And water and earth are very compatible. So it's it's almost like maybe you're trying to build your wealth or be stable for your child now. And, you know, after, you know, a childhood of of being more adventurous, your your stake or your um, the it, it taught you to value, you know, stability. But this is not, you know, this is not bad if, if definitely, you know, if, you know, if anything, a lot of times the wands really do play into the pentacles because when you think about it, um, uh, astrologically, and actually as I go through the How to Tarot, um, I, I would go through the wands first because I'm following the astrological pattern of it's, you know, Aries, Taurus, Gemini Cancer. It's, you know, it's, it's fire, earth, air, water. And that's how I'm going through the how to tarot. Um, but fire always precedes earth. And, um, you know, and when you think of pottery, fire, you know, solidifies earth. It's like a kiln, you know. Um, so a lot of times, you know, you, you learning what profession you want to go into is probably, you know, due to you being exposed to things and, you know, going out and adventuring, you know. Now, one other way that I kind of read it is um, it's quite possible that this could be you and a spouse um, where you could be the king in both of this scenario. But in the past, you were the king of wands, right? And then you met your queen 
right? And again, you know, wands, wands are, um, you know, um, wands are free loving, right? They're, um, they're again, adventurous. And what might have happened is, um, just like all of us, when you when you meet your counterpart, um, and or you could be a you could be the woman in this scenario. You could be the queen. It's good to be the queen. Um, but what what it is is that after you meet, you know how it is. It's like sometimes you could be um, you could be loving life, you know, doing your thing. And and these are all these are all kings and queens here, guys. So this is mature energy. This is not not knights and pages except for here. But um, what I'm kind of seeing is that you might have um, been real, you know. The other thing is that the kings are the um, the apex of the suit. You know, you've gone through. So maybe you've you've really you grew up and you you did all your journeying and you met you met uh, your uh, partner in crime, and now all of a sudden you know okay you know I've I've done my adventuring I'm ready to settle down right. And um, it can be the same thing. Maybe you met your counterpart and now, you know, you have a little one. And so now you're shifting your energy to, okay, um, you know, I've, I've, I've journeyed the world. I met my, my love. We're married, you know, king and queen there. Now that you have a little one, you want to be stable for them, right? And um, I also kind of sense that if this is for a child, that this child is very uh, sensitive. They're very, they're, they're sweet. They're a little water baby. And it's almost like um, they're so, they're so open and innocent that you really want to be stable for them. You want to provide. And again, you know, the king and the upright, he, he wants to make sure everything, he, you want to be that, that stability for this little one. Now, the one other thing that I can, one other way I can read this is that in the past, I think same scenario, same scenario where you met your counterpart and now um, it's almost like um, you really, you, you do still want to, you might be thinking about career or finances or, you know, transitioning to, um, you know, owning a house and having stability, but you don't know how to start, right? Um, so the pages can also be messengers of that, you know, maybe um, the the other thing is, uh, one other thing we didn't touch on is that the fact that it's a, um, a pentacle, um, a lot of times, pen, and the pentacles being the physical, um, this could very well be a rock. <laughs> like this, the, the the man's thinking about a rock, and when you think about um, when you think about a rock, it can be a ring, <laughs> like a diamond ring, right? So what could be happening is that you know maybe um, you know you you are transitioning into a stage where you might be thinking you're either thinking about proposing or you've been proposed to and again you know this is you want to get to your pinnacle you want to go from being a page to being a king of pentacles where um you you have all the stability in place right you want to be good with money you want to have the house the stability so you're 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 starting this and you're very innocent and open-hearted about it but you, that's where you want to get to is that um the other thing is that it's it could have been a surprise with the fish popping out and it being an emotional message you know it could have been you got proposed to um i saw a really cute video um i i i, I was just scrolling through YouTube, I think it was here on YouTube, where, um, and I came across um, a, an interview with Adam Levine of Marine, Maroon 5, and it was so cute. He was talking about how he proposed to his wife, his now wife, Bahati, uh, Bahati Prinsloo, and it was so funny. He goes, I pulled out the ring, and then I got down on one knee, and then he goes, my knee kind of gave out, so then I switched and I went to the other knee and then I went ahead and got down on both knees and he goes, and it was so awkward. He goes, and, and he goes, and then I just blurted out. I thought I was being so suave as I said, see, you know, he goes, I said, see, honey, I'm on both knees. And he goes, but that's how it sounded in my head. But what came out of my mouth was both knees, both knees. And she's kind of looking at me like I'm nuts. <laughs> And that's what I'm kind of thinking of with this combination. It's almost like someone, and again, that little surprise, like, you know, like an emotional gesture of giving a ring to someone and 
both knees, both knees, sorry, um, <laughs> sorry, um, but just something sweet like that, right? But maybe, um, maybe you do, either some, someone has done that for you recently, or you are thinking to do that for someone else, but you need to get into your full-fledged King of Pentacles mode, right? You have to earn the money and be ready for all of that, you know, being that reliability. Um, one other thing is that, you know, when I said the rock, right, uh, that made me think of that too, is that it is being someone's rock, right? The King of Pentacles is being someone's rock in addition to giving someone a rock, which would be a ring, right? Um, now, the future is, um, the future you got the Four of Swords, right? So, um, again, maybe... Honestly, guys, this could quite honestly be a situation where maybe um, because the the progress of this, because we got a king, a queen, we got a page, and we got you know money on your mind, and and then kind of kind of a healing reprieve. Um, this quite possibly might be a situation where, um, because the other thing is that, just to throw it out there, if you watch the How to Tarot's for the, the wand suit, wands are a phallic symbol, so it is quite possible that you got together and you might have a little one, and again, being a surprise, you know, you might have a little one on the way, and, um, and this entails, you know, getting a house, getting possibly married, um, so the future really is kind of like, okay, after this whirlwind of activity, and the, the again, wands are about that, they're, they're fast acting, right? Um, you know, and you got to switch gears from being a, a, the king of wands to the king of pentacles, or the queen of wands to the king of pentacles. Um, you might need a break in the future, right? To kind of uh, rest and kind of reflect, <laughs> you know? Um, but uh, this is you know, I am kind of getting a sense like it, it's transitioning, you know, maybe you actually do get, the other thing is when you do have a new baby in the house, and um, I actually have a sweet friend who her, her, um, her baby is getting older now, but um, you know how it is, the first year you don't get any sleep, <laughs> you don't sleep, um, so it, I am getting kind of a, a fast energy, so much going on, and then, you know, in the future, you, you do, you just want to be stable, and you do want to kind of just, you know, rest a little bit, kind of sleep. Now, uh, the card, your Oracle card is you got Native American. And I do, I know this, um, I know these are past life cards, but I really do get a lot from that. Um, first off, you, you have a teepee, right? Which is like a house, right? It's where you, um, you know what I kind of think of? I know I reference a million movies. I'm sorry, guys. I don't mean to be like a pop culture, you know, I don't mean to be just bubbling over with pop culture references, but um, if you've ever seen the movie Dances with Wolves, um, you know how, this is what I'm thinking of, you know how there were, there were a lot of conversations that happened between husband and wife in, in the teepee. I keep thinking about, um, what is it, Kicking Bird? You know, I love the conversations he had with his wife in the teepee. Like, it's like before you go to bed at night, you know, the, the you know, the real conversations that you have. Uh, that's what I'm kind of getting from that. I, I and, and with it being swords, it's almost like, um, you know, uh, and, and again, the practical, being practical. I'm almost getting that, yeah, I really do get a sense because it kind of plays into everything, right? This is your house, right? Um, I, I feel like, I feel like before you go to bed at night, it's almost like you're talking to your, your spouse, you know, and maybe, maybe you do have a new little one and you're not getting much sleep, but, you know, it's almost like, you know, you having those kind of practical conversations. I swear that's what I'm getting. I know that's a crazy analogy. Have you ever, I know that's an older movie, but if you ever watch it, I, I loved the conversations that occurred, you know, um, and again, the swords and resting, it's almost like the other thing that I'm kind of getting is that Native American tribes were very, um, they're very, you talk about a village to raise a child, you know, um, they, they were, they were, um, the other thing is that they were, they were, you see the, the, the staffs, the sticks in the teepee, they, they traveled, they moved they moved. And um, the other thing that I'm kind of getting from this, that the tie I get between the two 
kings is that the um, you know Native Americans they they packed up the TP and moved along with the seasons and the other thing that I kind of get with this is that um, I, Native Americans knew the the value of using everything like you know when they when they when they hunt buffalo they never wasted anything they used the fur they used the meat they used the bones they you know they were they they understood um the cycles in nature right which is very much a king's thing but um i am i am almost getting a sense like if you do have to travel or move or maybe you are trying to get permanence for your family but it might involve a little bit of moving around and having those conversations with your spouse before you go to bed and trying to get some sleep and trying to sleep on it that's the other thing is you know sleep on it so um I hope this makes sense, guys. I'm really getting a lot. And the other thing I'm getting is that this is way domestic. This is like kind of real world. Um, it's funny, in the weekly energy card re reading, we, we got real spiritual with it. But I'm getting a real like daily life kind of vibe from this. I really enjoy that. But uh, wow, that's, that's how the King of Pentacles manifests in your life. That's really awesome, guys. I like that. I like that a lot. All right, so deck number two, we got the Zillic Tarot, and I do, I love this this king. It, it, in this deck, I said in the intro, um, in this deck, the um, it, it says knight, but it is the king. Um, um, there's a, uh, inner certain tarot decks have it where the princess is the page, the prince is the knight, uh, the queen is the queen, and the knight is actually the king. So that's the that's the layout of this deck. But one one little nugget I wanted to share is that um, you know when I go to pick the cards for the How to Tarot, there's there's a few times that the image of the card just pops when I say oh, okay I'm going to film the um, I'm going to film the King of Pentacles this image popped in my head and I just knew okay that has to be and you see it's the second deck I was like ah, I gotta go Zillic with this one because um, even though a lot of the imagery is very similar it just it you know I had to use it I, I was like this I, I thought of it um, this image came to me when I said okay what what you know what does the king of pentacles mean to me oh oh Okay, I'm not going to pull this as part of your spread because this is this is the this is completing my thought. My favorite card in this deck is the the High Priestess, and it just came out. And you know what it tells me? Oh my gosh! Wow, that just tells me because I was saying, I, all right, sorry, having a minute. It's telling me that yes, you you chose the right card. Thank you. Okay, Queen of Discs. Oh my goodness, King and Queen, y'all. Oh wow. Okay. Feeling good. This is this is telling me I'm I'm in tune. Alright, so I'm gonna get to shushing and get to reading. Sorry guys. Okay. Deck number two. How does the knight of not knight, king of pentacles manifest in your life? Thank you. Queen of Cups. Okay, present energy, please. Thank you. Please clarify the devil. this kind of popped out underneath this which makes a lot of sense uh, future please future energy. Hmm. I'm gonna keep that there future please okay we have quite a few cards here but there's I was drawn to keep it because Clearly, this is getting, getting energy here. All right. So, King of Knight of Discs, deck number two. What is their oracle card? How does the Knight of Discs manifest? How does the King of Pentacles manifest in your life? Okay. Wow. I really do love the images in these oracle cards. I was I was very lucky. I, I said in the intro, um, these cards are hard to find because they're no longer in print. The author um, 
had a change of heart and decided to not do Oracle decks anymore. So then there was this big rush, you know, for people to buy, you know, they became scarce. And so the price of them went astronomical. I did buy this used, but it's a complete deck and they're really just, the images are just really, really gorgeous. So, okay. Sorry guys. Uh, it's, um, I'm, I'm, you know, it's funny, as I've been doing the reads for the Pentacles, I've been real slow. It's almost like I'm in, I'm, I'm plodding along. I'm sorry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shush. All right. <laughs> but, um, wow, guys, this is amazing. Um, it's really, it's really quite, it's really quite clear to me that, guys, I am getting a masculine energy, guys. I'm getting a masculine energy from you, and, um, so... Either that, or if you are a feminine watching this, I think this, I think your King of Pentacles pertains to a man um, who who loves you. Okay, I'm just gonna put it out there. Um, we have because what we have is we have somebody who now the other thing is I'm taking the art into consideration, and this is the one deck that even though he's a king, he is horseback. He is not the knight, he, but he, in this deck, he is, you know, a king on horseback, which, and, and, um, you know, knights or, you know, this king in particular is on a mission. He's on a mission, right? And he's on a mission to get stability, right? He's, he's out there growing his crop. He hasn't, he hasn't reaped what he's sown yet but when he does it's going to give him all this right this is his harvest i'm hearing harvest right and the sun is you know it's almost like if i had to say it if you're a woman watching this your man is out there and he's trying to he's trying to build a legacy for you he's working hard to become the king he's working hard to become the king and well guys in the past One other, one other way that I can kind of read it is this could be your energy as well. This could be your energy as well, but we'll read it both ways. First way is that you, you have a king that's out there that's, it's almost like they're away from you and they're, they're earning, they're trying to either build their career or build their fortune. They're, they're, they're growing their harvest right now. Um, but in the past, you got the Queen of Cups and the Two of Cups. And look at this, guys. So if if you're a woman watching this, you got someone who absolutely adores you. Like, they, they see you as the Queen of Cups. Like, you, you have their heart. You have their heart. And they had a love connection with you, right? One of those cups is the cup you brought to this, right? Two fish, one cup. And it's almost like it's almost like it's you. Like you, if you look at it real close, the 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 silhouette, the the shadow really looks like the queen there, right? And um, so I think in the past you 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 had this really deep love with someone, right? You had this really deep love, and they they're very connected to you. Now, one other way that I can kind of read it is that maybe if if you if the, if the king is your energy one other way that i can see it is that maybe in the past you were you were very romantic right like um you know uh you really didn't in you didn't really think of the future in terms of well i have to get a job and get a career so i can buy a house you didn't think about any of that you just kind of um you you did you dated i think it isn't that you didn't worry about contributing to practical matters like that but you were you were definitely more in your feminine like i'm, I'm getting a sense very receptive right so i do kind of sense that you're more of the role of um, you know, of, of nurturing on an emotional scale where I am getting more of the, the, the stay at home mom or, or the woman who, who dated, you know, and she said, okay, I'm going to worry about, you know, I'll worry about home and finances after I get married. Right. Um, where, Either that or you could potentially, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of uh, mature energy. That's because we've got a queen and we've got a king here. Um, 
and you know kings and queens and water and, and earth are compatible right water and earth are compatible um but i definitely get a sense more of um because it's an emotionally mature queen i really do think that you are just you're nurturing to this person i really am getting a sense of two separate energies but we'll read it both ways but um, so you either have um, a king of pentacles who's out on a journey right now. This could be you could be a spouse, could be a husband who maybe has to go. Um, it could be someone who travels to earn money. Um, again, it being a horse, maybe they drive, maybe they drive a truck for a living or um, or maybe they have to travel for their work. You know, there are some people who really have to take planes and go places all the time, you know, for their job. Um, but, um, there is, I'm really getting a strong sense that, you know, they, they absolutely adore you and you do, you have this strong emotional connection to someone, either that or in the past, it was really more about your, it, you were, you cared about your emotional maturity. Um, it, it could also potentially be that maybe you had a father who really took care of you where, um, you know, where your role was just discovering yourself right like you just you know if if you're a woman you know you you your family took care of the other thing is that water is very family based it's your emotional tribe um where all you know your needs were taken care of and the next step for you would be you know connecting you know coming into your emotional maturity connecting with someone else getting married and then you know if if you had to work as well then that's when you would think about that so it's it's not a bad thing that you're not as practical as your king here right but you, the current energy here is that we got the devil and underneath it we have got the four of wands um which is another completion card it's a twin flame card right you see two fish there and then you see two people there right and the one thing is that um, the 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 person on the right, the the sh the kind of shell that's there, it looks very much that can either be like a ram or like a goat. Like I'm getting a strong Capricorn vibe from this pile, um, but um, what I see here is that. Um, the root of the situation is the Four of Wands, which really is, it's a, it's a graduation, but it, it does, it talks about, um, it, it can be buying a home or getting married. And, um, but it's crowned by the devil, which I really think that I'm getting kind of a sense. And the other thing is that this, the, the Six of Wands, which is the victory card, came out and it came at an angle as if it were blocking. Right? It's almost like victory is... I am getting a little bit of a workaholic vibe here. Um, because with victory blocking it, it's almost like, you know... Um, I think this person... I think this person really... They, they want to have enough money... They want to have enough money. I really get a sense like, like I, I am getting a little bit of a workaholic vibe here. I think this person really cares about you. And I think what it is, is like, it's almost like that in order to, you know, to give, you know, to have the, the graduation in order to, to have the house, it's almost like, you know, cause the devil can definitely mean greed and the devil can mean, um, you know, being, being um, kind of shackled to material things, right? So there's a little bit of a materialism here. But what I'm seeing is that this person's on a mission, right? It's this, this king is traveling, he's on a mission. And, um, and his harvest is there. And then you have victory, you have victory kind of crossing this energy. Um, so 
I see that this person wants to be victorious, right? This person w wants to have the material finances. They're, they're not going to stop. They're on a mission. This is a man on a mission, right? The other thing that I'm kind of getting here is that with the victory there, I think they also care about being, um, being acclaimed for this, right? I am getting a strong workaholic kind of vibe here. Like they, they want to be, they want to be known as the provider. They want to be, they want to be that GQ man right but they're not complete they're still on the horse and you know they're not they're not back at their castle sitting on the throne yet they're still on the mission but i do think that victory they they are going to be victorious this person has the tenacity to do it but i do think that there's a little bit um there is a little bit of an they feel like there's a preoccupation with money here and there's also a preoccupation with um graduating like I, I think this person cares about climbing the ranks they this person wants to be they want to be the CEO but they're still that's the other thing wow guys you picked the deck that really illustrates that too because this is a king but he's wearing the armor of a knight uh, it's almost like it's almost like he he is this person is um, the other thing is with the six of wands that does tend to the the traditional uh, Rider Waite Smith shows that as being um, a knight right somebody who came back from 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 battle victorious right and getting all the acclaim um, I do think that this person will become the king. They will become the king. They're dead set on becoming the king. But the thing is that it is, it's it's almost becoming an obsession with them. They will be victorious. But the, I do think that it, it, it is becoming a preoccupation with money. It's a preoccupation with status. And, um, but they will get it though. Um, but I do think that they want to, I think they're also kind of obsessed with climbing the ranks. You know, they want to go, again, it's a king, but he's called a knight in this deck. That's wild. That's really wild. I do think, um, you know, victory is blocking this. So I do think one other thing that I'm kind of getting from this is that whatever obsession or whatever preoccupation, if this person is a workaholic and is like, you know, got, the other thing is that I'm kind of seeing the blinders on this horse, you know, you know how when a horse has the blinders on, they, they're, they're narrow focused. And we said in the description that the King of Pentacles, he can be like, when he gets stubborn about something, oh my God. Um, but I think that he will be victorious over these energies. He will have victory over these energies. I do also think that he is, he's the king, even though he looks like he's a knight. So, um, but that's pretty wild, guys. The other thing that I get is that if, if this is your energy, I think you might be going through it, you know, but I, I'm definitely getting a strong sense this is two different entities. I think you're this person. Um... Now, in the future, you've got some beautiful energy here, guys. You really do. Um, you have the Ace of Cups. You've got the Two of Swords, and then you've got the Universe, which is the world. Right? So, and now one thing that's interesting is that in the past, you go from the Two of Cups to the Ace of Cups. I will just throw out here, guys, if this is your energy, maybe in the past you never had to be the practical one. Um, I also, I kind of see the, um, I see the King of Pentacles as being that rock, that person that you lean on, that you rely on. Um, and sometimes I do see that as kind of, I, I refer to it as you being your own man. Um, anytime I see kind of real sensitive energy like this that has to manifest into this, um, I do kind of see that as you learning to support yourself, right? And again, you know, the knight and king dynamic here. Um, maybe you are, you know, maybe in the past you really did have it a little bit easier where you didn't have to. You thought, okay, if I, you know, if I get married, it'll be a joint household. It doesn't just have to be me. And then maybe you... Uh, decided somewhere something happened the other thing is two of cups it can be a love relationship that teaches you this right maybe you you dated a little bit and nothing really worked out but this is such positive energy i really feel like this is a current relationship right um but it would be that you know maybe you get a preoccupation all of a sudden you get a fire under you to to um you know get a career and be good at it and to make the money and be be your own be your own man right be your own rock 
but that's one interpretation. I'm getting a strong sense that this is this is your man and that you're away from your man um, and that he's a little bit of a workaholic. But he is, I think he is trying to build security for both of you. Um, and he will be victorious, but he's he's doing the dan the devil dance a little bit though. And the one concern is that the devil is that it is it's obsessive. It's like you know, gotta do this, gotta do this, right? And and again, you know, the stubbornness, the tenacity of the king. Um, but in the future, we have the Ace of Cups, we have the Two of Swords, and you have the World. And the World is a completion of a cycle, right? Now, the two, two of swords in this deck means peace, right? And, and you see you see a flower there. Um, I kind of sense that... Because um, normally the two of swords is that, that head over heart. It's being stuck kind of in a stalemate. Um, but th the colors here... Um, I really do think that, um, I think there's going to be a, a healthy resolution, <laughs> um, and it's going to, oh, sorry, we were way out of focus there. Um, I think in the future that this person is still going to have, like, some lingering, you know, uh, lingering, you know, um, this person's going to be the, the one who really likes having that, that money, right? But with the ace of cups um if this is your energy i think you're going to come to a good balance with this you know emotions and you know the other thing is that it can be you know the practical world maybe in the past you've been real spiritual and then you realize okay spirituality is great but it doesn't pay the bills right um and i i think that you're gonna come to a point where you have um a self nurturing like you're going to fill your own cup right and with this being peace i do think that you're gonna because it being the two of swords usually it is um you know mind over emotions um but if this is your person i think i think what's going to happen is they're going to come back from your journey and you're going to have almost like a, a real loving start and um i think this person still does kind of want to continue to make that money but it is going to be the closing of a cycle like it's going to be a completion of a cycle where um you know again with the victory here i think you're gonna you're gonna have your harvest um you know you're gonna have your harvest and it's going to complete a cycle um but the the two the two of swords being peace i, I again i i feel like you know, there's going to be some kind of balance that comes from this. Um, and the, the earth and water energies are kind of counterparts to each other. You know, the um, anytime someone's too overly practical, um, adding adding water gets them in their feels, right? It, it, if, if you have a real practical spouse, you're kind of like that emotional anchor to them. You, you give them permission to not work all the time and to emotionally enjoy themselves and then they do the same for you if you're more of a emotional person they teach you how to be practical so that's what I kind of get from this it's almost like you get back together and 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 when you think about it when you have um when you have water when you have water and you have uh you know it, it almost looks like a, a beautiful mixture like, like he planted a seed and you watered it and they, there's a balance between you, right? And it completes the cycle. It completes the cycle where, um, but I am getting a very couple vibe from this. But I do think that this person struggles with workaholic tendencies. Um, the other thing is that it might take them away from home. Um, this could be like a military situation too. Um, where again, you know, um, you know, maybe they have to go off on missions, but it, it does, it brings you, you know, the income that, that secures your family life. Um, but I do, I see that maybe, maybe there's a compromise here, um, where, you know, maybe they come back and they get a desk job. And so instead of, you know, being out on these missions, but it definitely completes the cycle. 
And I do, yeah. I, I am. I'm definitely getting like, you know, it's like this card is like almost like a, a, a happy balance between, you know, earth and water, you know, and you will, you'll get, you'll get everything that you want. It's going to be a beautiful, it's going to be a beautiful closing of this cycle, right? I do think this person does need to balance, you know, their obsessions, though. I do think that they're very preoccupied with making money. Um, now, the card that you got is you got biblical. And when I see this card, I definitely think, um, I think of, uh, sometimes I think of religious factors. Um, maybe there's a little bit of a difference in religion or beliefs. Um, the other thing that I kind of get is that you see this person is kind of building you know, he's, he's working with his hands, which is kind of a, 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 a king of pentacles thing. Um, um, maybe, maybe your person, maybe that is a parallel between you is that your person believes in, um, I, I see this a lot and I get this a lot because I'm a new age person, right? You know, that the irony is that I, I live in a world of spirituality in my spare time. But I'm very aware that, you know, you, you need to go to work. You need to, you know, if if it meant <laughs> there are times in life when you, you have to go to work and make the money and the money is the important thing, right? So I, I am, I'm getting kind of a, I'm getting a sense of a difference in beliefs. Um, but I do also sense that you're going to, the other thing is that, again, with the, the archetype of the devil and then the biblical, um, I'm not trying to bring that up in a read because uh, that's if you watch the How to Tarot on the Devil, it's it's a very misunderstood card. It doesn't mean anything evil. It just it it means that um, you know, because the other thing is that the Queen of Cups is a very spiritual person. You see, the Queen of Cups really does manifest with a lot of New Age people. Um, you know, uh, male or female, like, because you do, you get into your, you get into your emotions with things. If you meditate, if you do yoga, if you, you know, they're, they're very fluid <laughs> people. And, um, but a lot of times the, a, a practical person can be very drawn to that because you can, you can give them that spirituality, but you know, at the end of the day, if they believe, okay, you know, well, that person's out in space because, you know, you can't pay the bills with, you know, higher learning is wonderful, but it doesn't pay the bills. So, um, I do wonder if this is a little bit of a, you know, um, the other thing that I kind of get with the two of cups and the four of wands is definitely a very much a twin flame kind of card. Um, and the the devil is in the traditional um, rider weight. You see the two. You see Adam and Eve um, chained to one another. Um, and, but the victory over that, and the victory being also the 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 soldier. I think this is somebody who cannot forget about you. Uh, that's the one other thing. Maybe maybe they try to convince themselves that you're too that you're too different, that your beliefs are too different. But in the future, there is a, a, a really the Ace of Cups is the start of a beautiful beginning, and I do I see this this Two of Swords has a very unique meaning. It's almost like, and and you know the swords being thoughts or beliefs. I I think. If if this person is not in your life, they're gonna go out and they're gonna they're gonna build their foundation, whether that be career or money, and they're gonna come back for you. I don't think they can stay away from you. Um, but I do think that the other thing I'm kind of getting is that I, I get a sense that you might have to compromise, not compromise your beliefs, but um, you'll have to complement each other's beliefs. Like if, if this person, again, if this person's real practical, you give them that, that, that heart. And then, um, you know, if, if you start getting a little too out into outer space with your emotions, this person brings you down to earth and, um, and you can, you can, you can, you can have different belief systems, but still respect one another. And I do, I see that person working, right? Working on their beliefs. Well, guys, that was deep. I liked that. 
one thing I like about all these reads is that they are they're very down to earth right like I, I haven't I mean we got the we got the the world in that and it wasn't you know uh, in one of the how to and um, one of the weekly energy card readings we got the world and it was so like you're completing your cycle it's the end of an era and here it's like yeah he's coming back and you know you're gonna be together and it's gonna be great you're gonna have a house <laughs> you know so, and that's what I love. I, I'm going to miss the pentacles next, you know, next week we're starting on the, um, what are we starting on? The swords. Oh my goodness. We're going to start getting cerebral after, but so I'm sorry, I'm lingering because I, I'm going to miss, I'm going to miss all this practical energy, you know, not that the pentacles can't come up in the read, but you know, all right, deck number three. This is such a gorgeous deck. We've got the star seeker tarot. And I do, this is the practical king, the, the king of pentacles is practical in all three decks, but I do, I do, I think of like, I almost think of kind of a college professor, even though that's more of a wands thing, you know, just that book and the, the pentacle, you know, but I definitely see doctors and lawyers with this too. All right, so deck number three, how does the king of pentacles manifest in your life? Number three. Okay, present energy, please. Present energy, please. Okay. Wow, we got the seven and the eight. These cards are very well shuffled. Um, just like in the first deck, they were not next to each other, um, but they came out in sequence here. Future energy, please. Okay, please clarify the Knight of Cups. Okay, Queen of Cups. Oh, wow. I open to the Queen of Cups and then I open to the King of Cups. And then the Queen of Cups came out in the middle deck. All right, let's go ahead and get your Oracle card. This is the past life oracle deck. Um, I explained in the intro. Um, this is this deck is out of print. The information for it is in the uh, description box. You can. Um, oh wow! You guys got trust and faith on the bottom. Oh, if you can see this, I'll, I'll shuffle it. But the the colors. There's so many beautiful purples in this deck. So um, we'll shuffle and get it. But. Um, the bottom of the deck usually gives kind of a, a, a base energy to a read as well. But um, I lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. I'm a little pokey. <laughs> uh, I took naps today. They, my allergies are acting up a little, so I, I was napping earlier. Um, oh, I opened to the Queen of Cups and I opened to the King of Cups, and it was a clarifier for the night. So you have a lot of you have a lot of cups energy here. That's so much water for a king of pentacles. All right, so let's go ahead and get your oracle card. Wow. I'm going to leave that right there because I think the falling of it, the way it fell. And trust and faith is still on the bottom. Love life. Okay. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and see. Okay. Okay. Let's, let us see. Now, you got two major arcanas in the spread. You got two major arcanas. And this card technically came out as a clarifier for this, but it fell as like a block. And this is actually kind of a block too. Now, um, so in the past, um, we, got, we got the hermit. And I do, I love this hermit. He's up on the mountaintop and he, he looks like he's holding... The universe in his hands right and if you do invest in this deck I'll tell you the lighting does not do it justice but you can see the stars in the sky the gradient the layers of, of, of images in this is just absolutely gorgeous but um, in the past in the past I think you you've definitely had you've had an awakening um, there's so much cups energy coming out here. 
Um, and again, I, I, when I, when I cut the deck, I got the queen of cups and then I cut the deck again and I got the king of cups. I feel like, I think, feel like your practicality has come from, um, I think in the past that you've had a lot of, um, I, I think you're a very emotional person. I think the king of pentacles is what you aspire to be because he's grounded, right? Like with the tree. The other thing is that trees can mean family roots and it can mean health too, right? So with all these cups, it can be emotional health. Like you want to, you want to get solid. You want to get grounded, right? Um, that's the other thing is that, you know, okay, we'll get into that. But in the past... Um, and I feel like this is kind of a recent past. You are aspiring to be the King of Pentacles. And I think you're trying to learn. You, I think you've been reading books. And I think you have been working hard for your money. Um, but I think I do get a sense like it's almost like you want a real steady life. Like you don't, you don't want anything to be wishy-washy. And I think you've had what what brought you to this conclusion is some kind of a uh, recent epiphany i think you've you've withdrawn into yourself and you've looked at the events of your life and you said okay what do i want right because the hermit he he does he goes into seclusion he goes within and he he has he's you've had certain a certain amount of experiences up until now I, because again, this is the king, right? You're a king, or this is how it manifests in your life. Um, you, you've, you've kind of. I, I get a strong, mature sense. I get a very strong, mature sense with you. Um, but what I kind of get is that I think in the past, um, you, you decided you had certain experiences in your life. And you recently kind of pulled away and went within. Like you withdrew and you said, okay, you know, I've, I've come this far. I've had this many experiences. What do I want to do differently, right? What what do I want? You know, that universe in his hands. You know, what what would give me the world? What would give me the universe, right? And um, and you did. You, you really, the other thing that I get is that, you know, with the King of Pentacles being um, in this deck a, a book learner um, or someone who's very practical, um, it's almost like you decided, you very consciously decided to say, you know, based on my past experiences, based on where I've gone, I've, I've come this far, you know, I, I want, you know, I want stability, I want financial security. You're being very, very practical. Again, you want, you want, you want a foundation. You want a strong foundation. You want roots. And what I'm seeing here is underneath. So in the past, in the past, you really withdrew within yourself and said okay how can I become this king how how can I become this rooted grounded you know financially stable person how can I where can I because you also see mountains in the background it's almost like you came down off what you want is you want to come down off that mountain and put the put the challenges behind you right and you do you want to you want to plant yourself somewhere with vines growing up, you know, that gives you a foundation. Um, the other thing that I kind of get from this is that these are both cards. Okay, let me get into that. So what we have here is directly in your present energy and directly underneath. It's almost like, and I always say when three cards are in a line like this, it's the root, it's the stem, and the bloom. And the bloom is your tree, is, is your manifestation of the king of pentacles. It's you becoming that king, right? And the root of the situation, which is the root of your tree, was the eight of cups. It was you walking away. And it's almost like, again, it's almost like you, you, tell me this does not look like the same person, right? Right? I get a strong sense that you, I really get a sense like, um, because the hangman came out as a block to the Eight of Cups. Um, and the hanged one, there's... There's a lot of observation in this, guys. There's a lot of seclusion. 
um, there's a lot of being a hermit, you know, like I feel like, I feel like you've, you know, the hanged one is the hanged man, right? And again, it's looking at the moon from a new perspective and there's water. The other thing is there's so much water, um, and there's stepping stones here. Um, I, if I, if I had to call it guys, you know, you know how they always say, if you keep doing the same thing over and over again, you're going to get the same result, right? And I'm seeing so much water here. I think that you are, I think you're a very emotional person. I think, I think, I think you've had experiences with either, I'm, I'm not getting a whole lot of other people, so I don't see you walking away from a person, but I do see you walking away from emotional situations from the past, right? Like all these cups were stacked up, right? It's something that had your emotional investment. And you, you did, you pulled within and you said, okay, I've put all of that emotional investment into something in the past. And it didn't, it didn't make me the king of pentacles. So you walked away from that. You saw the situation from a new perspective. You said, okay, if I stay here with these cups, and you see he's walking through a door too, right? If I stay here with these cups, I'm not going anywhere. So you walk through the door. You walk through the door, and it's, it's again, you hanging over the water and you looking at the stars. The other thing is that you see how... It almost looks like you walked through the door to that orb, right? It was like you were following that orb. Um, I hope this is making sense. I I just think that I think that you you did in the past you did a very frank appraisal of possibly your relationships because your oracle card, male female, um, fell here. Um and we'll get into that in a minute, but it, it really did. It came out right underneath all these cups energies. Um, I think that in the past, you did a frank appraisal of, of your emotions, of, of what you've experienced, because the hermit, the hermit goes up to the mountaintops to reflect on what he's, what he's done right? He, he reflects, he, there's, there's no more experiences he needs to have. He already, he's been there, done that, got the t-shirt and he's going up to the mountaintop to evaluate where he's been and his experiences. And, you know, you're using your past experiences to manifest, to discover your purpose. I'm getting a strong sense of your purpose, right? And I feel like you walked away, like you did a frank appraisal of where you've been emotionally and you decided to make a change. And I think you also decided to be more practical. I think in the past that maybe you, you did have, um, you know, you, you, you're looking at your past experiences from a new perspective. You're almost like kind of, you know, you're hanging upside down and looking at it from a new angle right and you decided that okay whatever I, I i've just i've been you know where where i've been was where i was and i i wasn't going anywhere i was getting the same result i need to do something different right i need to see this from a new perspective i need to um the other thing about the eight of cups is when you walk away it doesn't mean you're walking away forever but i do see i kind of get the vibe of you walking away kind of permanently because you're walking through a door it's almost like you looked at it from a new perspective and you decided to walk away from any of the old feelings. And and again, this is going towards it's growing up until the into your tree of the King of Pentacles. So you want to be more practical. You don't want all this emotion. You don't want to be wishy-washy anymore. That's the other thing I'm getting is you don't want to be wishy-washy. But the one thing is that you go from the Eight of Cups to the Seven of Cups. And the Seven of Cups is, is about, is kind of, unfortunately, it is a little bit of a washy-washy energy. It's looking at all these cups and not knowing which one to choose, right? And the, the thing about the Seven of Cups is that I think what's happening is 
maybe in the past I am I am getting kind of a relationship vibe from this that it's funny you're coming across as it as you're coming across as single here you're coming across as single everywhere I look but it's almost as if it's almost as if all of these cups all of these eight that you're walking away is like it feels like almost like your failed attempts right like you tried to find love you tried to find love and and it it just wasn't happening so you you walked away you said okay you know those were my failed attempts and now the crazy thing is is that you still do want love right you want that golden glowing cup right but the problem is um the thing with the seven of cups is it's also those it, it is also very much a careful what you wish for card right and you can see you know you don't want to end up in the same situation again right i think you might have had some failed relationships in the past you you were you you withdrew you said okay i'm just going to be single i'm getting a strong sense of let me just be single for a while let me let me reflect on where i've been and try to do it differently and then you did I'm, i think you did have because the hermit is wonderful reflective energy he goes within right and these are two majors guys this these these are like the majors change your life right you had a life-changing experience you, you said, okay, let me not keep doing what I'm doing. Let me do something different. Let me look at this from a new angle. But it, you did decide to go ahead and walk away from all of your failed attempts. But the problem is you still want the cup, right? You still, you still want that true love. But it's almost like you're, you, you still don't, you know, um, you still don't know where to look for it. But I think that you, you're you saying, okay, instead of being, instead of following my feelings, it's almost like you want to be, I kind of read it two ways. I think you're either throwing yourself into work where you don't have to feel drawn to finding that perfect relationship, or maybe, again, maybe you've, you, you don't know which cup to choose, so at this point you're taking a break. Because again, the hermit, you're taking a break and you're saying, okay, let me focus on work. Let me, let me focus on other passions. And then maybe after, you know, after I've let that vine grow a little bit, um, then I'll be, I'll have more luck. I also get a strong sense. It's almost like you're, you're, you want this pen, you know, this pentacle floating over his head really kind of feels like a, um, a, it feels like a, a, a chakra thing, like, um what is it the lotus like the, the the crown chakra i feel like you you just you know that you want to be practical about it like you don't want to be lost <laughs> you don't want to be lost you don't want to be picking the wrong cup you don't want to be tempted to pick the wrong cup you know so i i really get the sense like but i do think right now in your present energy you know yeah, again, you she this this girl's got a cup over her head and this guy's got a pentacle over his head, which is like, you know, let let me think about money. <laughs> let me think about money not love right now. Or or let me think about what's real. Let me think about the practical. The other thing is that I think that you're reading a lot. Um I do think that you still feel a little bit lost. But I, I think you're in suspension with those feelings, though, right? I think you're in suspension. Like, you're just, you're allowing yourself to feel lost, and you're just going to throw yourself into work. And, you know, and then maybe once you kind of become that king of pentacles, then you'll be in a clearer mindset. Now, what I thought was interesting is that your future, your future, you got the knight of cups. <laughs> you got the knight. And as this two cards stick together, no. Okay. Um, and the knight is, you, they see a mermaid in the distance, right? You, I think you are. I think once, once, I think you're taking a break. <laughs> I do. I get a strong sense that you're taking a break. Um, I think that you, you kind of, you, you're going to work on your money a little bit. You're going to become that king of pentacles. You're going to, you're going to, you're you're checking you're you're checking like checking out a book you're checking out of the emotional 
up and down and you're pulling within and you're seeing things from a new perspective and you know again those eight of cups i think i think you're 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 i think you are marking your per, your previous attempts as failures um but you you still you still want the golden chalice you want the glowing cup of love right it's like the ace but the thing is you you, you want to be more practical about it because again what you know what you what you had in the past is what you had in the past and you don't want more of that you want the real deal you want the real deal holy field right and i think that you feel like if if you get more practical if you get more grounded that you won't make so many emotional mistakes and and i don't even think it's mistakes honestly i think you know um, again, uh, pentacles and cups, they are, are earth and water and they, they counterbalance one another. It's like your emotions and your mind. And it is, it's very much mother and father too. It's, oh, wow, that plays right into that. We'll get to that. Um, but in the future, I think you're going to get back on the horse, <laughs> pun intended, with the knight. And um, I think you're going to go in search. You're going to go in search of, you know, that 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 love again and, and i think when you're ready right when you have some more when you feel practical enough um you're gonna be willing to offer your heart again and what i think is beautiful is that when i opened when i cut the deck to i i opened the deck and i got i got the queen of cups and the queen of cups is a mermaid in this deck um and then i cut it again and i got the king of cups so what that really tells me, and oh, wow, guys, here, I found it. You see this? The King of Cups is floating. Tell me he does not look like, you know, like, okay, I figured it out, right? So I think your goal is, okay, you know, I think you're going to, you're going to build your foundation. You're going to build, you're going to build your fortune. You're going to build your career. You're going to, you're going to focus on the practical for right now. And then when you're ready, you're going to take everything that you've learned and, and a, with a little bit more of a practical stint, and you're going to go in search of that love. And I think you're going to find it because honestly, I, what you want is because again, when I cut the deck and I got the queen of cups and then I got the king of cups, the king and queen of cups are very emotionally mature people. They're very, they, they're, 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 they're the heart centered couple. And I think, you know, it, it is that, that it's like the two of cups, you know, they, it's, it's that heart centered couple. That's what you want, right? You want that beautiful, you know, connection. And so I think you, you do, I think you want to kind of, I think you want to pull back a little bit. You want to get grounded. You want to earn some money. You want to focus on work. You're tired of feeling like you, like you don't know what cup to choose. And then when you're ready, when you're feeling, when you've kind of balanced a little bit that, you know, that, that emotional, you know, being pushed around by the currents, you're going to wade back into the, the, the water, right? You'll wade back into it and you're going to come at it at a knight's energy. And the knight is on a mission, right? He's not a page. He's, he's on a mission. And, um, and I think your goal is to get the king and queen. Now, again, what was great about this is that you got the card male, female. And honestly, guys, I, the, the thing that I'm getting is that this man is pointed this way, and so is the Eight of Cups and the Hermit, and this woman is pointed the other way. I, I really do get a sense that I, I think, and, and just like we said, um, you know, with, uh, with Cups being real um, emotions, and um and then earth or pentacles being practicality um i do think that i think in the past you might have struggled with the the the, the counterbalance between male and female i think maybe maybe if, if you're a man maybe you felt like you just didn't understand women or the other thing is that with the king of pentacles he's a real man's man remember right like he 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 says okay you know 
um, he's the provider, right? He's the one who pays the mortgage. He's the one who goes to work and makes the money. Maybe you struggled with a little bit of that too. Maybe you felt like, I don't know, if, if you're a man watching this, maybe you felt like you had to make more money in order to, to be the, the, the male role in this. Or um, if you're a female, maybe, again, you, you just... You, I, I've said it in another deck. Sometimes you want to be your own man, or, you know, um, sometimes if if you've had, if you've had a rough time dating, sometimes you just take a break and you say, okay, if I if I'm not going to get married and and you know have a house with someone else, I'll buy, you know, I'll just you know become a CEO and buy my own darn house, right? Um, but and it doesn't mean that you don't still want that love, but you'll you'll circle back and get to it when you're ready right? So I, I am, I'm getting a strong sense of male and female roles. Uh, the other thing that I kind of get that we talked about is, you know, mother and father, right? Like the, the, the king of cups and the queen of cups. Um, there's a, there's a dynamic there, you know, um, the king of pentacles is very much a, he's the, he is a man's man kind of figure. Um, so, in this in this sense, I think you might also kind of struggle with. Um, now, sometimes when I get this card, I do see it. You know, just to throw it out there, it could be um, a, it could be a little bit of a sexuality thing. Um, you know, if if you are discovering your sexuality, but if it is not that, I'm I'm kind of getting more of. I'm I am getting kind of more of a role, uh, a strong sense of the. Um, you know, the roles in society. I'm getting societal roles. Like, like again, you know, um, I, I say it all the time, you know, that if, if you're of a certain age and you're not married and you keep thinking, well, you know, can I go out and, and be my own man or can I, you know, uh, go out and do I have to, you know, go out there and be the Mr. GQ in order to get, get the girl, right? Um, but I do kind of get a sense that, you know, love might have not really been forthcoming. And I, I, I get a strong sense that you're taking a break. <laughs> you're taking a break. I also think that you're, you, you feel like once you feel a little bit more grounded, you know, you'll go back, you'll get back on the horse or you'll wade back out into the water, right? The other thing is you see the water at the bottom of both of these cards. You'll, you'll get back out there. You will. But um, I think you, I do think that you're, you're getting driven a little bit crazy between the dynamics between male and female. You see how they're back to back there. <laughs> um, there's a great, there's a great um, play uh, that I, I actually came out on PBS recently and it's called She Loves Me. Um, it's, it's actually the original You've Got Mail. If you've ever seen that movie, it's there, it's based on this play. And, um, but I, I love that the, the role reversal, um, you know, the expectation of, you know, the man as the provider and the woman as the, you know, the nurturer, um, sometimes we are, you know, even in a modern society where, you know, gender makes no difference. You can do anything you want to do, be whatever you want to be. Um, it is kind of expected. The other thing is I am kind of seeing his suit looks, looks kind of like the king there, you know, again, it's like, you know, maybe, maybe you feel like you have to, to go out there. And if, if you are a man watching this, maybe you feel like you have to build yourself up a little bit and then, you know, get back on the horse to offer your cup to someone, um, you know, in order to, to be the, the man's man. But wow, guys, oh my gosh. Every single time I say, oh, well, this will just be a short read, but the how to tarot's do always run a little bit longer. And, you know, if you think that it actually is a short read, if you're just looking at the um, the reading side of it, I, I think the, the how-to part of it wasn't even that long. But, wow, guys, I thank you so much for joining me. This was the last of the pentacle suit. As I said in one of the earlier decks, I'm going to miss the, the energy. Uh, the energy is slow and steady and... and and practical and factual and um and and we're all done <laughs> so um but i hope you can i hope you have a good week and i thank you for joining me um if you join me again on saturday we're going to do the weekly energy card reading um and what that is is you you pick a deck of a tarot or oracle and we go ahead and do a spread to see your energy for the next seven days 
Um, and then if you want to join me next week, uh, next Tuesday, we are starting the air suit. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. We are halfway through the minors, guys. Whew, I did not expect that to go so quick. But um, we will be talking about the, um, the, the wonderful epiphany and breakthrough of the Ace of Swords. So I hope you can join me then, and I'll catch you later. Bye.